geometry dates back to ancient history and perhaps one of the most famous and iconic shapes, geometrical shapes, that we come across are the pyramids and we know them from uh, ancient Egypt but right across at the other end of the earth um, in uh, Central America, places like that, they, uh, the ancient tribes were also producing buildings that had pyramidal uh, shapes or shapes that were into pyramids. So, so this is a um, very common sort of geometry in ancient times. So if we were to, we can all recognise a pyramid when we see one, but um, how do we define one? Well, a pyramid is a three-dimensional solid object with flat surfaces. And at the base of the pyramid is a polygon, and the type of polygon describes a pyramid. So, for instance, um, the most famous pyramids have a square at the base, and then from the base comes the sides, and from the back. And so this is um, a rectangular uh, type of pyramid. You can have pyramids that are triangular at the base as well. And so when you put up the sides like that, obviously you're not drawing it very carefully, uh, you get a triangular based pyramid. But this is the one that, um, that we, we're most used to. But there are other ones as well depending on the polygon, the, the shape at the bottom. So we're going to look at two properties of pyramids. One is a volume and the other is surface area. So first let's start with, with volume. And don't forget that volume is the space that is contained within the structure. And the volume of a pyramid is given by this equation. So this is one third multiplied by the area of the base. So you work out the area of the base. And if uh, this is a square, then that's quite easy. Even if it's a triangle, that's, that's relatively easy. Multiplied by the perpendicular height. So height is a word that uh, I know you'll come across. Uh, but perpendicular, perpendicular literally means at right angles. That if you had a stick in the ground and it was at right angles to the ground, that stick would be perpendicular. It would be straight up as a right angle. So here in the pyramid, we have the apex of the pyramid, where the faces, um, all the faces meet. And then if you were to drop a line from the apex all the way down a straight line, like a plumb line, um, and this is at right angles to, to the base, then this would be the perpendicular height. I don't know whether you can see, there's a little h there. So this is the, the height, the perpendicular height. So if you know the area of the base, so if you can work it out, and if you know the, the height over here, then um, you can apply all this, put it in this formula, and out comes the volume. And remember that the volume is acute. So if it's if all of these measurements are meters, then it'd be a meter cubed. Or if it was centimeters, it'd be centimeter cubed. Let's look at the surface area of a, of a pyramid. And the surface area of the pyramid is um, it's a collection of areas. So it's the area of the base, and the area of the base is obviously this area here. And so if we know this value and we know this value, uh, then we can work out um, the area of this. This happens to be a square, so this is five centimeters as well. And then if we know this distance, and this is the, the height of the the, just a triangular on a slope. So this isn't the perpendicular height, but this is this height over here, the sloped height. And here you could put, I don't know whether you can make that out, that's six centimeters. Um, 
And that's all the information really we need to know was uh, when working out the surface area. So the area of the base, this part here, is five centimeters by five centimeters. So that is 25 centimeters squared because we're multiplying centimeters by centimeters. So that's, let's, let's put that to one side, 25. And next we need to work out what this is. And because this is uh, a square, and they all meet together at the same point here, then you have four identical triangles over here. So the area of each triangle is five centimeters, which is this distance here, multiplied by six, which is this distance here, divided by two, so if you remember when we were looking at triangles, that in order to work out the area of a triangle, then you can sort of make it into a square, which you can do here, uh, and then half that value. So that by that and then halved. And so that gives you 15 centimeters squared. So now let's, let's add up all these areas. So there are four identical triangular faces. So that's for one face, so you'll need to multiply that by four to get the surface area of all the faces. And you add it to the 25. So here we have the total area, 25 comes from there. Four comes from the four separate sides, and that's a plus, times 15. 15 comes from here, this value. And when you do the calculation, then it comes to 85 centimeters squared. So what I'd like you to do in, in your own time, uh, I won't work through this, uh, but, but you can um, write your results in the uh, comments um, and then I can get back. So, so let's change these values around a little and let's call this seven centimeters and we'll call this eight centimeters that's up that height. You would try to work out what uh, the total might be. Now, when you do that, make sure that it doesn't stray that much because it's not that much of a change. If you get a wildly different number, then something is wrong. But you have a go and uh, let me know how you get on.